they give you this because if you fall asleep on the track, you put this on your chest. It just says I'm sleeping. So you're then, not dead? Yeah, so people know that you're not dead. Sean Cousins, bib number 1999, UTMB 2024. I've always played competitive sports my entire life. I, from rugby to touch football, uh, squash, uh, competed in CrossFit for many years. And then in November 2022, I did my last ever Olympic weightlifting nationals. And after that, I wanted to get into some more endurance stuff. So I created a, a run swim, which was running from Manly to Palm Beach in Sydney and swimming in 300 meters in every ocean pool along the way. So it ended up being a 42K run and 4.2 kilometers of swimming. And then once I completed that, I sort of didn't know what was next. I crewed a friend of mine, uh, Penny Key. I crewed with her husband down at the uh, UTK Ultra Trail Kosciuszko which is in the Snowy River in December, 2022. And I remember watching the milers run past the guys doing the 100 miler and uh, had always had an urge to do some, some long events. And I remember when I was down there, we we're leaving and I called Tash, you, my wife, and said, I'm doing the 100 miler next year. But it was Penny that really spurred it on, watching her just crush the 100K. I was like, it's time to get back into some running and, and do some big longer events. That's when I took up trail running. I did my first trail run in early 2023. I The first event that I wanted to do was the UTA 100, which is the Ultra Trail Australia, uh, 100 kilometer race through the Blue Mountains. So I ended up doing a 12 week training block for that. And that was my first big event in trail running. Always had a goal many many years I've always wanted to run at Marathon de Saab which was a stage race through the Sahara Desert and I thought I needed to do a 100k race a 100 mile race and those races would get me ready for MDS so after UTA the next goal was to run a 100 miler which I ended up doing uh, Ultra Trail Kosciuszko which is 100 miles through the Snowy River and you summit Mount Kosciuszko, which is the highest point in Australia. I ended up doing that in December of 2023. And then after I had done those, that was when I knew the next goal would be MDS, which was in May of 2024. So UTMB was never on my list to do. It is obviously renowned as like the Super Bowl of trail running and, and a lot of people's pinnacle race to do. But for me personally, MDS was like my North Star. That's what I was working towards. But with doing UTA and UTK, they gave me the opportunity to put my um, stones or essentially tickets into a lottery to potentially be picked for UTMB. And I thought, I'm never doing these races again. I've got them there. I might as well just put them in the lottery to see what happens. And I remember laying in bed. I knew the lottery was getting picked that night for UTMB. I just checked my emails, really nonchalant, just thought it was going to be a, you didn't get in. And then I could hang my boots up and never run again. I remember sitting up and just going, oh, f I've got in. And then woke you up and just said, Tash, I got into UTMB. And I remember you just being like, oh God. <laughs> So that was what spurred it on. Once I got in, uh, I had some doubts whether I was going to do it or not, but just the opportunity is just too big and too exciting for me to say no to. So decided to, uh, to come on over and run UTMB. Still a lot of rocks. I've got to be so careful. I've rolled man called already <laughs> my coach Jenny Morris she wrote all my programming and has done since I started trail running and typically I would run anywhere my big weeks were up at around 130 140 kilometers per week with anywhere from four to five thousand meters of elevation were my big weeks my peak weeks and then other weeks I would run sort of my my lower kilometer weeks were anywhere from 70 to 80 kilometers each week and sort of consisted of two long runs a week some dedicated hiking practice a little bit of tempo work but not much and then a bunch of strength work as well anywhere from six to nine sessions a week dedicated to it 
I think this race, out of every race I've ever completed, I needed to be in the best shape possible to finish and do well for myself. And I, in my training, I've PR'd my longest runs, like my 50K training runs, the fastest I've ever done. I've climbed faster than I've ever climbed before. All my numbers were incredible. I've had no niggles, no injuries. It's been seamless until 10 days out from the event on a really simple training run. I stood on a rock and rolled my ankle. That has really heightened the emotions, the nerves, the self-doubt. That's really played into it as well. I met Aiden, who is the Irish physio. I actually met him at the refuge that we went to. And uh, he's over here helping with the Alpine project. And he was amazing. He came around the house and uh, did a few tests on my ankle. And he has really boosted my confidence in my ankle. He, he essentially looked at it, said there's no structural damage. It's aggravated, it's annoyed, and it's sore, but it works. So he gave me the confidence on do your best not to protect it, trust it, just sort of bite down on the mouth guard, deal with the pain. The, the structural integrity is there, so it's just gonna be a bit more uncomfortable. Going through and prepping my gear actually is giving me a lot more confidence because a lot, all of my gear I've used in my races and even holding my pack I remembered what I've been through with my pack. It floods me with all these memories of like, reminding me that I'm capable of doing it. So they've activated our mandatory heat kit, which means you've got to take some extra kit because the temperatures in town are meant to get really, or while we're doing the race to get really high. That actually fills me with more confidence because I know now I've got a new respect for heat after doing Marathon de Saab in the Sahara Desert for nine days being exposed to extreme heat. If this isn't 50 degrees, I don't know what the f is. This is incredibly hot. I know that I'm capable of dealing with it and I know sort of the signs that are coming. So when they activated the heat list, I was like, oh, it, that even made me feel confident because I was like, oh, I've been in that. I know what that's like. Yeah, like I'm definitely a middle to back of the pack runner when it comes to UTMB. I'm more your weekend warrior sort of pace uh, i'm not here to be competitive in any way shape or form not even with myself like just finishing under the time cap is sort of my goal and and i think a lot of the videos that i watch are, are about professionals they're, they're shooting for a time but this is the most prestigious race in trail i love the idea that i'm going to start on the start line with jim warmsley and tom evans who are the best trail runners in the world you know being able to run the same race as them i love the fact that we're circumnavigating a mountain you know, like to start and finish in the same spot and to look at these mountains as to think that I ran all the way around it, that really excites me. I'm excited to see what my body does, what my mind does with this new aspect, like to, to be exposed to um, elevation and lots of climbing. And like, I'm excited to see what I do, what, I, what my thoughts are and how I deal with them. If I could send a message to the version of myself that's finished UTMB, I think sitting here now with self-doubt, with being scared of doing the race, having the most admiration, the highest amount of admiration for anyone that's finished that loop and understanding what it goes into it. I think I'll just say that maybe like, a, <laughs> I think I'll just say like, I'm really proud of you. That I admire you. And that it's sort of incredible what you've achieved and don't overlook that. Bonjour. Bonjour, hello. Merci. Yeah. Bonjour. Bonjour. Bonjour, UTMB. Yep. Yes. Do you want a drop bag? Yes, please. Thank you. Merci. Bye bye. bye. Let's go. Almost there, mate. Finish off. Right there, right there.
feeling, Ethan? I'm too scared after coming in now. <laughs> I mean, Longing Headland's pretty tough, but about 65 Longing Headlands, I reckon. <laughs> oh, it's just beautiful, and I'm excited now. We're just gonna get going. <laughs> 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 we're just gonna get out there. <laughs> <laughs>